for the skin score here. I'm gonna say um, SS win. Like 5-3 for skins. <laughs> Alright, final load into Summoner's Rift. I appreciate that Fountain Laser has a health bar, but that's really redundant. No one can kill Fountain Laser. Fountain Laser is immortal. And here we go. I'm um, still expecting that early invade from the spaceman. Try to find out where that jungler is or try to set him behind. Yep. Here they go. Yep. All right, here we go into game number two. Just making sure I got everything. Looks like it's exactly where it is. I said. I'm misplacing things all right again. And they are going for the invade here. SS once more stacking up as five. TDK. Knights playing defense. Not in a good game. spot. Oh, there you go. Shaco. First blood down to the silence. This happened to you guys last game. You had to know it was coming. Good prediction from SS. And that's a f good prediction from SS on exactly where the Shaco would be. And Silas gets to, he gets a little bit of extra money. A little bit of extra I'm money, take a, a very I'm good item. I'm going to guess there that they went on that Shaco with no flash. Yeah, Shaco early game. Not much mobility, not much of an escape there. So once more, they're just put on the back foot. Some pings going down. That kill went to Silas, giving him an extra item above. The Dark Seal is going to give him a really strong advantage of that healing going on. Yeah, extra healing, extra AP, and if he gets any kills, it's going to get even harder for Corky to do anything. Hecarim with the Raptor start there, the uniquely there. Raptor start, going to take his red buffs on his own, and now level 2. Wukong got a leash. So SS's bot lane was there a little faster there because they didn't have the responsibility of leashing anything. Top Pepper lane. Starting on those raptors makes it easier for him to hide where his route starts. Yeah, he's doing a full clear as well. So full clear into this Krugs. He is getting a little low, but he'll pro he should be just fine. He does have smite. Up in a couple of seconds here. Oh, here comes a good hook by Thresh. A play followed. Some really good damage. Good trade down onto on Zaya. Nice work there. Hecarim does clear his Krugs, so he comes out of that at level 3. He's already ready to gank. Bot lane getting plenty of pressure there. Zaya and Rakan not really terrifying until about level 3 when Rakan has all of his abilities. But still can be pretty threatening here. Looks like, overall, I'd say, pretty even in, C in CS across the board so far. Nothing major happened outside of that kill. Oh. I hit a button. I shouldn't have, guys. Basement getting some wards into that jungle. Make sure they can keep an eye on that Wukong. Get no surprises yeah. with the ganks coming in. Yeah, you track the monkey. You, to, you know exactly where he's going to come out. There's not much you can do to you in the, in the long run there. Wukong, though, may try to pass down towards bot side. He is in vision. He is in the river. They are pinging it now. Wukong just going to try to take that scuttle crab instead. Basement are backing off. They're going to try to put up vision. There it is. That's the ward. Yep, they're aware of the ward there. Mukongo does get that bot side scuttle, so they are one and one piece for their scuttles. Shaco does roam out. He, Poppy, though, has a really big wave just built up here. I think she's baiting him for a freeze or something there, but oh, Wukong is in a very scary spot. That's ghost burned. That's a heals burn. 
Heals burn from Sivir. They decide to go under tower just a little bit. They do trade some damage back. Flash! Flay! Heal is burned! Oh, no. Zaya has to burn heal and flash. All summoners blow in the bot lane except Rakan's. Rakan might be able to do something here with the flash ignite. But in the meantime, Foozle Bamboozle taking out the Corky. Bit of an all in there. We got distracted. Poppy doing poppy things. Poppy's somehow up in CS. That doesn't happen too much. Anyone's ever seen a poppy lane, you know how that goes. Bot lane's gonna back off there. That was not a good trade for them. They did end up taking the loss in there. They're gonna lose CS. Poppy going in, got baited by the Shaco boxes there. Baited into the Shaco boxes. Well, yeah. That doesn't really hurt her too much. She is gonna have to use her teleport here though. That's not ideal. Just gonna try taking a shot here. Shaco though does not have mana. We'll try to lead Poppy through the box. She suspects something. Doesn't take the bait. Top lane. I do we not know. agree with that teleport use on Charmelo. He might have been able to save it for at least dragon pressure. That's gonna open up dragon for the knights a little bit a little more. Well, not really, because remember, Silas also does have a teleport as well. So unless they bring all five, they do have a teleport disadvantage. But if he can try to get that teleport to be burned, or if they burn teleport anytime soon, I think it'll be fine. He is going to teleport, so teleport disadvantage mm -hmm. evens there out. There we go. And that actually means that in a couple of minutes, Charmella will have a teleport advantage, so they can probably use that about 15, 30 seconds to make a play. Fuzzle goes in. Excellent trade on to Corky. Half his HP is gone. Rakan doing a little bit of warding. And overall... Slight advantage. Ever so slight advantage. Over to SS now. Just with some sound early plays. That teleport from the Wookiee Warrior. Oh, situation there. It goes. Fuzzle oh, gets no. the kill. Does he go down? No, he's alive. We got a fight going on in bot lane, however, and they back off. Hecarim, though. Hecarim has eyes. He's just waiting. I think he wants this. He does want this. That's Silas going in. Baited and outsmarted. Wukong, you cannot be around there with it without your mid. And you Wukong goes down. Infinite Blades. Taken out in the midst of his own Raptor camp. That's gonna put him very far behind this Hecarim, who now has a kill as well. Silas has three kills and is up CS in this lane. SS is doing very well early on. SS is doing a really good job keeping track of that monkey at the moment. The Knights still have an, a way to end to this game. They have a lot of AoE teamfight going on here. Corky forced to move out again. The engage doesn't happen. This time. Corky, though, getting a good trade. He does have that tier first. Now, older Corky builds are Trinity Force. Oh, Shaco trying for that bait. Poppy wising up, though, does not want to go into the bushes. Does not want to do anything. Yeah, Poppy suspects. Poppy suspects something. Goes for it anyway, gets the stun, the fear comes out, Shaco splits off. And goes toward, and runs away. Poppy did not make the right choice there, but is going to take the free gold. Fun to use the final assault. Night. Got that Shaco ulti out of the way. Clear yeah. That bush of traps. Oh, oh. Fools of Might. Nope, Wukong's going to go for it again, goes for the ult. This might be a shutdown here. In fact, yes, it's going to be. Yep, there we go. Wukong gets the shutdown, but it's too late. Hecarim goes in for the trade kill. And there's one of the first rules of the turret, by the way. As long as you don't hit them, the turret won't try to attack you. 
Hecarim goes oh, for the no. dive. Outplayed. Takes a tower shot. Corky still alive. After those, after all those dives, Nogero doing his job. Oh, Fuzzle goes for it, burns the flash. They are just trying hard now to just force this Corky out of lane, and that will do it. Space and Biff are building a nice lead for them right now. Not only in CS, but also in kills for that mid lane and jungler. We have 2,000 gold lead now. It's a much more sizable advantage than they would able to get last time, and it's increasing. Unlike their previous attempts, it looks like they've managed to calm down and find a bit of center now. Nice to try something to stop this bleeding. It's, they're slowly lo losing more and more. At the Shaco losing a lot of CS. He's actually losing in CS to the Poppy. If Jack can share my disbelief here for a minute, Poppy's almost never go up in CS. That top lane is being executed masterfully right now by Carmelo, despite a little bit of early mistakes. Oh, here comes the freeze. That's not where you want to be if you're a Shaco. Hecarim can be around there any minute now to kill you, and you're, all the box fields in the world can't save you if you're also afraid. Shaco's trying to bait that Poppy in again, see if he can get another kill on it. Control wards going down. A little bit of river control established. They actually got a lot. SS has a lot of forward wards currently inside of the inside of TDK's jungle. Yeah, Corky goes out. Fuzel takes a tower shot. Doesn't matter. He goes back in. That's a lot of damage. They're gonna disengage. Wukong wants to, or is at least considering it. Decides it's not worth the effort. Never mind though, Hecarim says nay and takes down the Corky. Con tries for something, doesn't get it, goes right back. That's just Rakan in a nutshell for you. Basemen are doing a really good job focusing that mid lane and the jungle, making sure they cannot snowball, they cannot get to their mid game. That's yeah, especially true with that Corky, because Corky is an incredibly dangerous mid lane carry. That's the hook. That is a clone and not the correct one. Wukong goes back in. This is might have been too aggressive. Spaceman, you shouldn't be there. He does go down. Might be a trade kill. No! Thresh goes down. Two Thresh gets a kill. Two more kills there. Sivert trying. Double kill. You shouldn't take those Thresh, but that doesn't matter. Overall, they even out the trade. And it looks like Teleport was burned as well. That might just net an advantage for the Spaceman. Yep, that should open up Dragon just a little bit for them there. Overall, I think that trade was good for the Knights. They were able to get that shut down on the Hecarim. Yeah, they do get a little bit of gold in their pocket, but at the cost of their Teleport priority. Tormelos is up right now. Foozles will be up in just a, in just under a couple of minutes here. And Shaco setting up his little box field there. Mid lane. I guess we're just going to start bouncing between mid and top for a little bit here. Turret's going down, so we're almost 14 minutes in. Foozle wants to go for another one. Decides it's not worth it. Never mind, he decides it is. And just throws some throws Corky's own ult at him. Again, the Wookiee Warrior, they're just trying, trying to bait Poppy into this hole. That really doesn't help you. Yeah, Shaco bounces out. That's a lot of damage done to Poppy. She's really hard to kill, though. And the trade more or less neutralizes. I still think that benefits the Poppy, though, because she keeps the CS advantage. Shaco just gets no pressure on her tower. And we're back in mid lane. They push Silas off. Tart plating falls. And it looks like the, mount, the Cloud Drake will go to the Hecarim. That's not something you want if you're TDK. 
I understand what the Wookiee Warrior is going for in that top lane, but the way he's doing it is not working out for him. It's getting him behind in that CS lead. Charmelo, I give him props on the way he's controlling that A bit of a fight. Lane. That's a good gank. Hecarim does go down. Silas, though, trying to fight. Good patience displayed there by Infinite Blade. That's another kill down. That's gold into his pocket. That's exactly where you want to be if you're a Wukong, especially since you've been bleeding gold for so long. That's not what you want, though, with Silas having your ult. Silas already wants to be in your face, and that looks like it's exactly where he's going to be. Overall, I think I will say, early game here, much calmer. This looks like it's a gank, though. That is a Wukong coming in. Poppy, though, just W's and leaves. No need to burn your ultimate here. Good trade again from Fuzel, just keeping Corky under his tower at this point. Mid lane prior, pretty much solely in the possession of Fuzel Bamboozle. Notek, Notejo, I can't even pronounce that, Notejo. Can't really do much, decides to run away, uses the Wukong ult. Oh, the Hecarim gank. Wukong wants to go for it again. Hecarim goes down to the blade. There's the poppy copter. Doesn't get anything. Good counterplay by TDK. And that's getting him very much closer now. We're down 2,000 gold between these two teams. The Spaceman should have planned that gank out just a little bit better. Wookie Warrior, though, does go in. Takes a lot of damage. Doesn't quite get much back down on the poppy. That's a very tanky top laner right now. That Yordle is almost unkillable. SS should probably get an Oracle lens to make sure they can clear up any of those traps where Shaco may be hiding. Looks like, uh, so we do get first turret. So just the pure priority that Fuzel has has been useful here. Wukong. Yeah, smart flat respect flash there. He knew they were coming. Decided didn't want to stick around for it. And he's just gonna leave. Rakan, though, not exactly a good idea. Does flash. Fuzel, you may have overextended. Never mind. Hecarim comes in. Gets stopped. Fuzel has a lot of HP. That's the hook! Rakan goes down to the Tidzi. But Hecarim's traded for by Corky. That's the clone. Thresh knows it. That's the ignite. Wukong's gonna go down. Looks like Fuzel's gonna take down Corky as well. TDK, they gave it a good fight. They had a good shot. They could have taken advantage, but they engaged too far. Bite off more they can chew. And SS just counters. That's not going to be mid turret going down just yet. That's going to be a lot of damage onto it. Never mind, they might be able to get it with this minion wave. And they do. Two mid turrets down. Your mid lane's gone, or all but gone. This is not looking good for TDK here. That fight cost them a lot. Shaco just doing a bit of damage to a poppy, but she's a poppy. Well played there. A little bit of a bunny hop there by Sivir. And that's going to go right into the Rift Herald. Now, this Rift Herald is late enough. They could potentially use it as a bait. They could drop it bot side and have it go top while they take Baron. Just drop it bot, go top, take Baron, and then siege. It's a very real possibility for them with this Rift Herald. It is on the Hecarim. They are waiting on a little bit of their items here. That Hecarim does have Trinity Force. He does not have his enchantment just yet, though, or his boots. I think the other option they might possibly take is they could take that Rift Herald top, take those two towers. They already have towers down mid and bot. That'd just be a quick, more, a quick way to get more gold for them. Either way is a very good use of Rift Herald here. Charmelo trading 
very well into the Wookiee Warrior, despite the Shakos just being a damage champion overall. Wukong it takes that. Build. Little bit of fight possibly being set up here. They're taking the Ocean Drake now. Everyone else, it looks like they're just backing off. Yep. From Wookie Warrior, it's going to be a clean shake. That'll be a clean take. Zaya's going to try to get a little bit extra farm mid. She is falling slightly behind. Corky, though, finally has that man. Finally has that mana mune. Is building possibly towards the infinity. The Trinity Force there with the uh, Phage, not the Infinity Edge. That'll come later. Overall, though, they are very behind. At least two items on multiple members. One and a half items on their top laner there. Massive. The gold lead's now 5,000 up. SS is in a very strong spot right now. Like, and they're just sieging mid. I really don't agree with Tiago there building that Mana Mune. He should have switched up his build to try to force that Trinity Force, give him an earlier spike. Yep, now Cork is going to sit down there. They do have a good spread here, so they're just going to pressure mid. Top lane is being pretty much completely left alone. Uh, you can argue that that's a good thing for them. I think the Poppy's going to be stronger when she's with the team, but they can't really afford to let Shaco just sit there and split push. So Poppy, for the meantime, is going to sit there and be a tank. Rift Herald looks like it is summoned. It is going to go topside, like you said. Solid prediction yeah, there. That tower. They could possibly dive that Shaco if they wanted to. They could. Poppy does dive it. Shaco can't really get out. I don't think that's a good call from Charmelo there. Yeah. A little too aggressive. Does blow Flash. Doesn't hit anyone with his ultimate. But does not die. So Flash and ult down for the Poppy. She has teleport up though. That tire would have gone down without that all in. I do not agree with Charmelo. But I like the aggression. Hecarim though takes a couple of shots. The Sivir ultimate comes in. Wukong goes down to Foozle Bamboozle. He is popping off today. Oh no. However, Foozle. he's going to get the shutdown to Zaya. That's not where you want to be. Didn't have a lantern. Almost grabs the Shaco. There's the box. Rakan going in. Gets the engage. Goes back out. No more fight will be had today. They just need to sit back and clear waves. Little too aggressive there. Little too over eager for some kills. And Foozle pays for it with his life. Wookie Warrior just being a little bit of a troll. Wukong will just, well, not Hecarim will just ult over the wall. Package is up for the Corky. That's an important cooldown, though, from Lucky Maverick that he just wasted. TDK needs to make something happen. They need to try to switch up those builds. They're going full damage, but they are falling off now that they're really behind. So while we're going to say this right now, Shaco is still down CS12 Poppy. Silas is destroying Corky. Only the jungle has an advantage right now, but Sivir is at 225 CS. Now, we like to say the meme here, Sivir has that 300 CS win condition, right? That is very likely a possibility. Sivir gets the 3-4 items, she becomes an absolute menace. And it looks like what th that's what they're positioning for now, Thresh clearing out the vision. Doing your do, do your due diligence here on setting up for these top objectives. They are going to focus, it looks like, on this Baron. And it looks like SS is possibly fancying an engage here. They have pressure in all lanes. They're trying to set up that Baron, it seems. If they can get that mid-tower, any pick, they will probably rush that Baron. I think a single pick here. The Wukong goes down, the Baron's gone. The Shaco goes down, probably won't be Baron. But that will be a lot of there'll be a lot of pressure in top lane that they can't match. Ooh, cutting it close there, Rakan. Fuzzle does go for the engage. Shaco decides to leave. This might be a mistake. No, he's got to seem to back him up. They finally switched it, so Charmelo's fighting the Corky there. Corky though oh, does not no. have the damage. Gets stopped by the W, and Poppy's just a monstrous tank. 
literally Amazing unkillable. Corky goes down again, and that's a lot of gold over to the Poppy. No, Terago right there with the bad positioning, put himself right there in front of that wall for the pop. Zaya caught out, running. possibly. Rakan has to go in defensively. Fuzzle goes down to the Feather Storm, so a good response. Wukong trying, but that's a re-engage from Hecarim. The fear backwards. Zaya flashes forward. And the boomerang blade for the kill. One for three for one. SS. Rakan is literally trying to kill Poppy. That is not support combat, my friend. This is a two versus one. They are diving. Sivir dies. Rakan goes down. Turret goes down. Wukong might be out. Yes, he is. Or not Wukong. Hecarim. And you die to Raptors. TDK had the right idea that it tried to force that fight. They need to do something to stop that push going at on. At Corky, Only though. Only problem. Oh. The only problem with that TDK fight is they pushed it too far and SS was able to collapse on them. Yep, Wookie Warrior there standing by. Control Ward exists, so sh no Shaco shenanigans for now. They might just try to start up this Drake though. Oh boy. That was just bad timing on there from the Wookiee Warrior. Yeah, that was not a place you want to be. He doesn't take it though. They will take the dragon. So there's a dragon over to... That is a dragon over to TDK. That'll help them with the sieges. Well, it'll help them survive a little longer. Yes, that's true. But it's a little late. It's not your favorite Drake. It does look like it's going to be another Ocean Drake. So we are quite rainy today on Summoner's Rift from the looks of it. Because y'all in a... Oh. Oh, it doesn't look like they want it right now. Wukong, though, is behind. Poppy is going in. Gets the stun down onto Zaya. Nothing you can do. Zaya, Rakan, go down. Shaco, though, d Wukong gets a return kill onto Sivir, but there's not much you can do about that. Corky leaves, gets feared. He has to flash. But Hecarim gets the kill. The Wukong clone is what will go down it's in his stead. Game. That could very well be the game, unless Wookie Warrior and Wukong can produce a miracle here. They have to hold at their Nexus line. They're gonna push for the end from the looks of it. Boozled bamboozled, baited TDK into that fight. They wasted some cooldowns, and SS just capitalized on it. Poppy's going in. That's a good steadfast presence. Oh, them back to it. Woo Poppy goes down in the end, but. She does save her team. The Nexus turrets don't go down, but they are heavily damaged. TDK was able to survive that, but now with that mid open, SS has Baron in sight. I do have members down here. Their tank is down for another 30 seconds. This probably isn't a fight you want to take at the moment if you're SS. Even if they're behind, they still have their items. They still have some damage. You're not the tankiest ever. Foozle Bamboozle does not like these Shaco shenanigans. Uses the uses the Wukong ultimate. Shaco trying to leave. And yep. Yeah. Wookie oh, Warriors just rolling them around. Their yeah. time. Buying so much time there, but he's just really being annoying. And he gets smacked down by the Silas Fort. They are trying to reestablish though vision control. Around the Baron Pit, around that top side. Sivir does spot a random control ward. It will not be long for this world. And it looks like they're just trying to establish some pressure here. They're going to use their open in him to try to force TDK onto the back foot. TDK needs to try to reset those waves. I understand they're split pushing, but they're not doing it in a way that will benefit them. It does look like they do have a slight advantage in the top side, but that's just going to bounce right back into that top turret, which is still standing, and just go right back towards them. So that does not do them any good. Bot side pushing in favor, pushing in favor of SS. Mid has a Sivir in it, so you know exactly where those waves are going. The opposite direction of the Sivir. And they don't really have any vision on Baron Pit right now, or really any, enough control over their jungle. 
Fuzzle there sitting in that top side. Decides to go. That's a very, very, very scary ult to grab there. Well, good thinking there by Fuzzle. The Rakan ult in particular can be used to can be used to set up their own engage there. Also with that AP ratio. Yeah, that's gonna hurt as well. Porky forced off that tower by that poppy pressure. Oh no, here Poppy it comes. getting collapsed on, but she's just so tanky! Finally goes down. It took and they are all five barriers. for that kill. But in their sacrifice, in Charmelo's sacrifice, the Baron will go down. They can't get there in time. They're going to be done and out. 2,000 below 1,000. That's going to be the smite. That's the, the smite, the lantern. They're out cleanly. There's nothing they can do. Play game one. There's nothing Charmelo. they could have done at all. Excellent cross map play by SS. Forcing the five on versus one. Surviving as long as you can. That is what being a tank can do for you kids. And now they have all the initiative in the world to just push these lanes in and end the game. SS has... Like TDK has to be careful. Their mid lane's exposed. They can just run Barons down there. Their top lane is, but top lane's a potential weakness. They're t they're down to their inhib turret in the bottom lane. They can just push where SS can push wherever they want here. It's about a seven thousand gold lead here for space. space and it space. looks like whatever they want is a second Ocean Drake for that insane sieging power. That will be the last Drake before Elder. A fight does try to break out. That is a Shaco clone. If anyone from That's a server ultimate though. Game. Hecarim's going in. The Hecarim ult fears him. The Corky gets stunned by the Poppy. Wookie Warrior gets a kill on the back half of it. So they do lose a Baron. They only have three left. That hook almost connects, but Hecarim has the has this minions now. That is Baroned up super minions. That will respawn the inhib. They do have minions on the bot as well. This will be likely two inhibs going down. Oh, does it miss? Thresh doing his job, keeping them off. Poppy now, telling them they're not allowed. This has to be their fight. Rakan goes in. The steadfast presence is too late, but it's too late for Rakan. The hook connects. That's a kill. That is the Zonia's out. That's a stopwatch used, but doesn't matter. Wookie Warrior will go down next. Koki will follow soon after the Nexus turret soon after and Zyra's carried away. She will go down. That is an that's almost an ace. Wukong's still alive, but it doesn't matter. That is a game. They're trying to pad their stats. They're fountain diving for a Wukong. That is two games. And the victory goes to SS! SS just really strong in that early game, preventing TDK from getting their item spikes. And on the flip side, TDK, they should have changed up those builds. They should have gone with more tanky builds. They were behind. They needed something to frontline for them. Yeah, they just didn't, didn't stop the bleeding, tried to get cheeky in the top lane. They paid for it into a good old poppy matchup. That is the craziest tank. Top lane I've seen in a long time there, alongside just the pressure they were able to put on because of it, because their top lane wasn't because their top lane was venting pressure everywhere else, drawing its attention away, keeping the Shaco in place. The Hecarim was free to move. Mid lane was destroying it. I actually think it was close, but nope, Sivir exists. So unfortunately, si Silas. Not going to have most damage in the game, but still, when you see your AD carry doing 22,676 damage in a single game, especially when that game barely lasted over 30 minutes, holy cow. SS dominating the early game, dominating the mid game, showing us how to pretty much it, it just outplay, really. Outplayed, outthought, and out-executed on the day. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. Spaceman had a plan and they executed it perfectly.
they didn't have to change their comp too much, and TTK just could not adapt to it. Yep. Now, that said, props to the Shaco. It did do a lot of damage. However, it did almost all of that damage into a Poppy, who did almost as much damage to him. So, not really... I honest, um, I don't think that... I don't think the pick worked out for him. That's honest, kind of what I want to focus on there was a bit of that draft. I think their draft let them down pretty hard there overall. I, I understand their draft. I see what they were going for. It just didn't work out. I honestly think that that Shaco build should have been changed up a bit. If it went full AD, the split push would have been there way earlier. Let's see if I can't get any of these kids in if anyone wants to do a post game. Probably not. It looks like they've already gone down. Oh, boy. Yep. Uh, I don't know. I'm hyped. I'm just hyped from that. That was some excellent play by SS. They did a real good job there. I would love to get one of them from an interview, but it looks like most of them already had to bounce. I understand for a lot of them it's late. I do have to say thank you all for showing up. Thanks for watching the stream with us. Um, you know what? See you next time. I do apologize for the technical difficulties. It is Season 0, as uh, Ansem said. We are improving all the time. If you want to cast and you want to help us out, feel free to join the Discord. Help any any casting counts, guys. Same deal with here. Same with the teams. If you want to sub, keep joining. Registration's open all split long. You can sub in pretty much. Like, if you're able to sub in and you have the free and they need you, by all means, join up. We need more people here, guys. It's a community game. It's a community event. We're here for you. We're here because of you. We couldn't do it all without you guys. And a big shout out to the tribunal, to the OG owners and managers of the casual esports amateur league. Yes, I'm using the full name. I'm really just tempted to call a seal at this point. But you know what? Y'all have a good evening, good night, good luck, and for the love of all things holy, don't feed.